So, um, good afternoon. Welcome back. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about Bash scripting. I'm going to sort of uh, fill in a couple more blanks that I left um, a couple of weeks ago. So if you remember, a couple of weeks ago we talked a bit about um, sort of uh, printing, um, reading input from the user, um, reading arguments, working with exit codes, if statements, stuff like that. So um, if you haven't looked at that stuff yet, please make sure you do so. Um, today, what I'm going to be doing basically is looking at some other topics. Um, and the big one that I missed that I didn't talk about before, let me get into matrix here. The one that I didn't talk about before was for loops. Um, so if you're a programming student, then you've probably been exposed to for loops before um, and really the only thing that you need from me is just to show you the different syntax and how it might be different from C language for example um, so I'll definitely do that I'm gonna bring up my two panes here um, so <clears throat> the way that I like to think about for loops here is um, like you're doing the laundry say um, when you're doing the laundry you start off with a big pile of clean clothes or something like that and there's not much that you can do with that um, you can't there's not much you can do with a pile when it's just a pile right um, you have this undefined number of different things pieces of clothing and you need to work with each one individually okay um, so when we're folding laundry and putting it away or whatever, you're working piece by piece. You say, you know, for each thing in the pile, what I want to do is pick it up, work with it individually. If I say, if this is a pair of socks, then I'm going to fold those and put them in one drawer. If this is a t-shirt, then I'm going to fold it and put it in a different drawer. If this is a jacket, I'm going to hang it up and so on and so forth. So generally when we're working with for loops um, what you'll see is we have sort of two different variables uh, let me go ahead and show you an example of this um, so I'm gonna bring up my first one over here um, I'll just open this up in Vim to make it look nice so this is called simple loop sh so this is what it looks like so there's a whole lot of stuff going on here um, at the beginning what I'm doing is just doing some echo I'm just doing this to make things look nice as you're gonna see in a second but this is really where things get real um, this line right here so for this example what I've done is I've hard-coded in three different things I've coded in coffee tea and juice these things aren't changing it's gonna do the, exactly the same thing each time I run it okay so this is kind of like our pile. Um, this is a pile of different things that we're going to work with. And over here is this new variable that I'm calling. Um, I'm calling it thing right here, but you can name it whatever you like. It's totally up to you. And so then everything that happens between do and done over here, this is the thing that we're going to repeat. Okay. Every time that I repeat this, um, the thing is going to be different. So whatever that variable is thing is going to change each time I repeat this. Now you can see since I have three things hard coded in over here this is going to be repeating three times. And really the only thing that's changing here is I have a comment here that's not going to change. Um, this echo uh, is going to be changing because we have the variable thing right here. Um, the read, I remember read I was using to get just like a input from the user. Uh, this time I'm just leaving it by itself. You're going to see what it does. Okay. So basically everything between line 8 and line 13 is the really important part of this script. So let's go ahead and run it. Simple loop.sh. That's it. Okay. So we're entering the loop now. The variable thing in this loop contains the value coffee. So, so like you can see, um, the value of thing right now is coffee. And what read is doing right here is just pausing the script 
So as soon as I hit enter, I can proceed to the next loop, the next variation of the loop. There we go. Uh, the variable thing in this loop contains the value t. So what we've done is we've gone from line 8 down to line 12. We are not done iterating through our different things, so we go back up to line number 8 and then go back down to 13. And then we do it again, go back up to line 8, back down to 13. So now that we've run out of things in our pile, in our array, um, the next time I run this, we are outside of the loop. And feel free if you are, uh, you know, I'm kind of a beating, beating a dead horse here, but like, you know, if you feel like you want to, you know, change how this works, Feel free to copy this script, change how it's working, change the things in the in the array. So that's basically it. Um, for loops are very, very good uh, when, you know, we sort of know the number of things that are coming in as soon as we start up the script. Um, so let me show you a different example. So in the assignment, uh, you get to a I believe it's the add script and the add script is kind of uh, tough because um, what's happening is you're expected to just add a bunch of numbers together, right? Um, the number, the different numbers are coming in from the user. So unlike my simple loop script, we can't hard code things in. We can't just say, you know, the numbers are going to be 4, 3, negative 13 or whatever. Um, if you try to hard code things in during that script, you're going to have a bar hard time because the assignment will change up the variables it's sending in. It's going to change up the arguments and you'll have to figure out a way of dealing with that. So the first way that we wanted to work with something like that was, uh, let's see, with simple arguments, right? So this is very good when we know that we're only supposed to have one argument or maybe two arguments or something like that. Um, add is going to be different because we don't know how many arguments are going to be passed in from the user. It's completely up to them. So um, a common error that I've seen from students is that um, they get to add, they create a for loop, they follow the instructions, and then they're trying to think about like, okay, um, I'm still trying to add dollar sign one plus dollar sign two plus dollar sign three plus dollar sign four. Uh, that's the wrong approach. I'm going to show you a different approach. Oh, let me exit that. So I'm going to bring simple loop in over here, and I'm going to use with with args. I think there we go. Okay, so here is another script, and um, maybe what I'll do is I will run this for you over here. And then I'll explain what the code is doing. Okay, so I'm gonna do simple loops with args. Um, so the first time I try to run this, uh, since I don't remember how this works or what it's supposed to be doing, I just run it. And um, I'm getting back a message saying that I'm supposed to run the script with arguments, uh, C simple args.sh. Okay. Um, so it's asking me to run this with arguments. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and give it some arguments. I'm going to give it something like uh, red, blue, green. So I've entered three arguments at this point. It doesn't have to be three arguments. It could be many, many different arguments. And uh, what we want to be able to do is work with this no matter what, no matter how many arguments we have, right? So let me go ahead and run that. Um, you can see that I'm getting this message entering loop. Press enter to step after each loop. The current value of thing is red. And um, okay, great. I'm going to run that again. So again, what you can see is um, I've created a variable called thing over here on line 13. This is a variable. I can name it whatever I like. For this one, I'm just calling it thing. Right, and I'm going to run this loop as many times as there's an argument, and then as soon as we finish, we we just exit the loop. Okay, 
So the really um, special thing about this one is this variable over here. I don't know if you can read that too well. Um, move that up a bit. <laughs> there we go. So this is a dollar sign and an at symbol. This is another built-in. This is another special built-in. So what this is going to do, this is going to contain every single argument um, separated with spaces. Okay. It's not the same thing as it's not the same thing as this one. What this one was doing was giving the back, give us, giving us back a number, right? It was giving them back a number based on the number of arguments, right? So we could, in this case, what I was getting back is um, the first time I ran this, I had no arguments. And so I had this if condition over here. So if the number of arguments equals zero, then we're going to echo this message, run this script with arguments, and it exits and it doesn't do anything else. This one is different just because we're not containing a number. We are containing all of the different arguments. And so let me go back and replace that. So what that basically means is for each argument passed in from the user, we can deal with that individually. I'm going to go back and zoom out. All right, that's a little bit easier to read. So what we're doing is uh, for each thing, we take it out, we start with red, and we go over here. So the current value of that variable is red. And then what I'm doing over here is I'm creating a new variable called everything so far. Okay. And what that contains is, first of all, itself. And then at the very end of that variable, I'm appending thing. So when we start this off, everything so far is blank. There's nothing in it, right? The next time I run this, or the first time I run this, um, everything so far is going to be created. It's going to be a new variable. The value of that variable is going to be everything so far, which is blank. So it's going to be blank. And then we're also going to add thing to the end of that. Okay, the next time I run this, the value of everything so far is red. And we go back to the very top and it becomes, the value of thing becomes blue over here. And then the value of everything so far is gonna become red and blue. Okay, and we're just echoing it each time so you can see what's going on. So as you can see, when we go back over here, Every time I run this, I'm getting new something new added to the end of that variable. So if you're doing math, um, you got to change your approach a little bit. Go back to lecture 10A or 10B, whichever one it was, um, where I explain how you do math. But that kind of gets you in the ballpark, right? And the nice thing about this is... Um, no matter what the user throws at you, you should be able to handle it quite well. Okay? I will sort of point you at looking at while loops. Uh, for whatever reason, we don't do a whole lot of while loops. Um, it hasn't ever been a question on the exam or anything like that, so um, I don't spend a whole lot of time on it, but um, while loops can be useful for other things. Let me see if I've got a thing over here. I am looking for a countdown. Right. So, let me go ahead and do that. While loops are very um, useful for different things. Um, one thing that while loops are good for is um, when the number of times we need to reiterate something is sort of undefined, right? So. Even when we're using for loops with arguments, um, as soon as we run that script, we know how many arguments are coming in, right? As soon as we execute it, we know that our arguments are red, blue, green, violet. So that's four arguments. It's well defined. We know that the for loop is going to be running four times, basically. Um, while loops are better when you want to keep checking a condition each time you iterate. So basically, um, 
instead of just having like you know for thing in number of arguments you're going to be sort of checking if a condition is true each time you run it um, I will not be talking about countdown.sh because it's kind of a when you go and look at it, it's fairly complex and it's probably not very well written um, it was just sort of an interesting exercise uh, but basically what it's going to be doing is looking at the time of right now and comparing it to the time of you know 10 minutes in the future and if those times are not equal it's just going to continue going and printing the current time or basically the, the difference between the two times so by all means go ahead and read that if you've got nothing better to do and if you're super comfortable with all the bash scripting stuff um, but otherwise don't worry about it honestly all right i'm gonna stop that because we don't need to look at it let me move on to the next thing okay so this is a good one i'm going to talk about uh command substitution let me clear this and i'm going to clear this okay um we've had we've been showing you a lot of different utilities at this point you know cat ls copy move touch make directory said awk cut sort shuffle all these like sort of utilities that you can work on from the shell um, right you know you can cat simple oh, I'm not going to show you an example but anyway we've been showing you all these different like tools that we've got and um, wouldn't it be great if we could use those tools inside our scripts to be doing different things well the good news is that you can now um, sometimes what you want to be doing is let's say let me just show you uh, the output from date, for example. Okay, so this is the output that I get from date. Uh, we've been working with date. Uh, that was, I think, like week one, we started showing you a date and stuff like that. Um, if you go over here and you give it a different option, you're gonna get a different output like this. Um, now, wouldn't it be great if we could use that inside a script for something? The example that I think of often is um, when I'm trying to create backups. If I have a directory or, um, well, let's say a student's home directory, for example, maybe what I want to be doing is be, be creating snapshots. And um, maybe what I want to do is create a directory called today's date and uh, copy everything from today into that directory. probably be a lot better just use version control or something like that but hey you know it's an interesting exercise so this is what I get when I run date dash I by itself right I get 2020 dash 03 dash 30 let me go ahead and open a new script called simple command substitution so this is an example of command substitution and what that means is we're going to execute something we're going to execute this command date and then we're going to be able to use it inside our script so let me go to the top over here so you can see that I've created a variable called today right now instead of just giving it a hard-coded um, you know a hard-coded value um, so you can see what I'm basically doing over here is running this command and what I'm doing is I'm running this command inside of these round brackets and I've got a dollar sign in front of it so the important thing to note about this is the the syntax of this it's just something like that um, in this case the spaces aren't important so you can just take them out it doesn't really matter but what's happening essentially is inside of our script we are opening up a new shell inside that shell we are running a command date and then the output from that command is getting returned that output is now going to be assigned to this variable over here so as soon as i've done as soon as i do this 
I have this variable called today, and the contents of it are the output from this from the command, and I can do whatever I want with it. So uh, the first thing that I do is just I'm just going to echo that. So let me go ahead and run it. Simple command sub. So you can see that I got an error over here, uh, but the first thing that I got is today is 2020, 0, 03, and 30. And the second thing that I'm doing here on line number eight is I am trying to create a directory in my home directory. So this is my home and this is today. So what this is going to be doing is creating a directory called 2020 March 30th. Let me go into, let me show you my home for a second. So you can see at the very, very top over here, I have already, I've already got a directory called 2020-0330. Um, and whatever, now what I can do in this script, I could do a whole bunch of things. I could, you know, copy some of my files into there. I could rename files so that they've got a date appended to it. Um, possibilities are endless, basically. Um, First of all, what I'm going to do is show you another script. Uh, this one is called simple loop with, I think, if. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this is another example. Feel free to go and read through it and see how it's working. Basically, this is, um, you know, we're looking for a doctor on board the airplane. Um, now, what I'm going to try to do is, instead of running this normally, um, I'm going to be running this with Bash, and I'm going to be giving Bash itself some options. So instead of just doing something like ls-l, that's a command, that's an option, um, I'm going to be running this with Bash. So I'm running Bash as itself, and I'm giving an option to Bash, and this option is dash -x. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is just simple loop with if. So we're going to see this interesting output. Let me, sh let me show you. What this is going to be doing basically is um, it's going to be stepping you through the script as it's running. The output is really hard to read. I've looked and looked and I'm trying to find like a better way of parsing this or whatever. Um, but you know, whatever tools are out there often, you have to install them manually and we don't have that option on matrix. So whatever, here we go. Um, what you can see here is we've gotten to echo and every time we are encountering a line, it starts with a plus. So that is equal to line number three over here right so once we encounter this line to echo something the next thing that happens is we print to the line and that's what you see over here okay the next line that bash encounters is line number four and you can see that it's here and read is just sitting there waiting for user input okay so that's where we're at now I'm gonna go over here and hit enter and we're gonna continue so you can see the next thing we're going to encounter is line number six, which is the beginning of our for loop. So we're going to go over here. This is what we get back. We can see line number six here. It's printed off for us right here for passenger in all these different people. Um, the first thing we're going to do is echo this passenger is actor. Okay. This passenger is an actor. That's, that's bad grammar. It's, this passenger should be is an actor, but I didn't figure out a simple way of implementing that, so we'll just deal with it. So you can see you see here this uh, the substitution of the variable has happened here. Okay, we have encountered line number eight here. We can see the if statement on line number nine, so we can see actor equals doctor. That's false. Okay. So then the next thing we encounter is line number 14 down here. Whoops, wrong window. So basically, we can see that um, actor does not equal doctor. So we skip all this. We get to line number 14. We're just going to sit there waiting. 
Let me run this again. So you can see we're back up to the for loop. We can see that this passenger is a developer. The developer is not a doctor, so again, we're reaching the very end. So as you can see, it's kind of hard to read. Um, it's not as nice as Visual Studio makes it, but uh, you can go through this and you can kind of see how things are working out. It's actually a very nice way of seeing when if statements are returning true and false and stuff like that. So that's one approach that you might want to take if you're really having an issue with, um, with a script.